Hello and welcome friends to Kiki's Best Friends Radio Show, a show that showcases people who have been through their worst yet are now living their best and how they got through it and what advice they have for others. Today I am here with my special guest and usually my co-host, hey. but he's in the guest chair today. We have Pastor John McLean here. Hello, yeah. Pastor John. Hello, Kiki. Thank Our second show. I know. This is it's a pleasure and honor. I didn't expect to uh, be interviewed this quickly, but um I'm ready. I have my hard hat on, so bring bring the questions. I'm ready. Well, I figured I wanted to do this before, but we had some schedule changes last week for yeah. our guests. Um, it happens. It yeah. Happens. It is the business. But being that we are a partnership as co-hosts here, yeah. and um, I know I've been slowly getting to know your story as mm -hmm. we've been working together, mm -hmm. I thought this is a great opportunity that we can share a little bit more about what brought you up to being part of Common Good Media, which Kiki's Best Friends is a part of, yeah. and how you got there and what your own worst to best story is awesome yeah i mean it's definitely this this show um it touches on kind of i think the feminine side of us all and kind of sharing what usually people aren't don't feel comfortable don't feel it's hard for them to be vulnerable to get into this space but um yeah i look forward to stepping into that space myself with you because you're a really good question asker you're a good listener and um you certainly care so yeah, it's been well, a pleasure to watch kind of how you do your thing. You're so kind. And thank you for being in that spot. And that means we have a spot open for our co-host yeah. today. So we have Lori here. Hi, Lori. Hi, Kiki. So Lori is going to be filling in for Pastor John as my co-host. And Lori is here with Sylvan Learning Center, correct? Y yes, ma'am. That's it. Can you share with us a little bit more what Sylvan Learning Center is? Sylvan Learning Center is a um, organization a company that does tutoring for kids. Okay. We, uh, we test our kids um, and then take those results and target what we're teaching them so that they can really learn these skills that they need to learn. Mm, mm, and your nice. testing is very specific to learn how they learn best and maybe what challenges there are in that learning process and how you can give them resources. Is that yes. correct? Yes, that is. Yeah, mm. we, we go to a lot of trouble to really pinpoint what's going on mm -hmm. and target them so that we can help those kids the best way that we can. Awesome. And, and what age group particularly? We do all grades. Awesome. Yeah, all we the way awesome. through college. Kindergarten through and into college, yes. That's amazing. Yep. That's and cool. right now, for kids who are still in kindergarten through high school, you have a special offer because of the state of Arizona, correct? Yes, that is correct. The state has um, some funding available to provide tutoring to kids who are in publicly funded schools, whether they are um, a district school or they're a charter school, and it's free tutoring um, for families. Right. And it's it's an amazing opportunity that's for these cool. kids. That's super cool. And that's only available until? Um, so the, the first session is starting on the 16th, and it's going to the end of February, and then there's going to be another session that starts, I think, in March. Okay. okay. But awesome. would really want to act fast. If yes. you're interested, mm -hmm. get in touch with Sylvan Learning Center. How can they find you best? Um, you can Google us. Um, Sylvan Learning Centers are, are available on Google, or you can give us a call. Um, our phone number is 520-333-5445. Uh, Thank you, Lori. And that's Lori with Sylvan Learning Center here in Tucson. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be with us while we visit with um, Pastor John a little bit further. Yeah. Actually, I have a real qu question. Oh, real quick. yeah. Go ahead. Um, are you connected with, I'm guessing you're connected with the schools. Are you connected with Tucson International Academy? Uh, not currently, no. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Let's let's talk afterwards. I'll okay. change information. Um, I'd love Dr. That. Jennifer Hereda, um, the superintendent with Tucson International Academy, is a good friend. And I'm sure these type of services, they're. There's not enough of them. You right. know, I've been working with her for years, and, and I've never met a tutoring organization. Even wow. though I'm sure there's plenty of people out there doing tutoring, but it's certainly it's not as, uh, it seems like as accessible as it should be. So, yeah, um, yeah it's awesome what you do. I would love to talk yeah. to you because we're the yeah. best. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. <laughs> yeah, <so laughs> and favorite. I love that. And we're on Kiki's Best Friends Radio Show. So my usual co-host, Pastor John McLean, is my guest today. And he has his own worst to best story, mm. if, you, mm -hmm. if you think. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm open book. I'm yeah. Open book. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Wor I mean, I we okay. all go through it in life, you know, whether it's in our childhood or in our young adulthood, in our middle adulthood or, you know, older adulthood. I definitely, I see life as seasons, you know. 
from a biblical standpoint, being Pastor John, you know, that's certainly um, what I've learned and what the, you know, the Bible teaches us in a lot of different ways is, you know, like we all go kind of through different seasons. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know where to start, so I'll let you fire away. You're the one who gets to the juice. So, yeah, well, what do we got? I I know our listeners know you very well because you are the host of the Common Good Media Show yeah. and you are a co-host of the Tasty Tuesday Tasty Tucson. The Tucson, Tucson. Tucson. Oh, forgive me, Mr. West. <laughs> the Tucson Tasty Tucson. Show. I always fumble over that mm-hmm. one, but um, it's those literations that yeah, get me tricky. every time. It's tricky. He does it really well. He yeah. does. Yeah, I used to He's mess it up pro. every time, too. Yeah. But, I made yeah. sure mine was Kiki's best friends. Yeah, like, yours, no yours confusion there, it's right? Sweet. Yeah. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the Tucson Tasty Show. And I said it right? Yeah. Oh, good. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, you guys have heard his voice. You see him at the networking. He's hosting networking at the Sands Club on the first, third, and fifth Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. You're a very busy man in our community, but it didn't start with you just jumping in. And you have mm-hmm. your, had been in a pretty low point in your life after your service. Is that correct? Well, I mean, just... I want to think even being in the service. Like I joined the army um, two weeks after nine eleven. And thank you though for your service, yeah, nonetheless. Yeah, it's my honor. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's Not to say proud anything. to serve fine people like yourself for yeah. sure. Um, but uh, yeah, that going through going through war. You know, I went to Iraq for eighteen months, and you know, coming back and kind of figuring out where my place is in society. And thankfully, I adjusted well. I, I was a pool and landscape contractor in Tucson, and, and did several other businesses. Was really successful. Started my own radio show for the first time at twenty five years a- years of age at this station. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Like I thankfully, even though I went through war and lost some friends and kind of you know went through some rough stuff, that was rough. Like that was really hard. Like I still you know have nightmares and still deal with kind of the repercussions of that today. But thankfully, I did bounce back from that. But then, seasons. Seasons. Know? Yeah, where even after I felt like I bounced back to in my mid twenties, running for you know having my radio show, running for mayor at age twenty six in the city of Tucson against Mr. Jonathan Rothschild. Hey, Jonathan. Um, and then after that, again, having, you know, going through some troubles and not not necessarily troubles, the traditional kind, but just going through those struggles and becoming an, a protester and being part of the Occupy movement and giving, putting everything in storage and living on the streets and becoming a homeless person by choice, you know, which I think ostensibly every do, everybody does in some capacity. Um, but then realizing at a point how little I had and having to come back from that. Okay, so when you went and when you made that choice, you say it's a choice. Mm-hmm. When you made that choice to become homeless and mm-hmm. start living on the street, was that motivated by goodwill or was that motivated by survival or share? What brought you to that point? Well, I just didn't know any better. I think, uh, like a lot of people, even when they get to that point where they don't have their name on a lease or they don't have dominion over housing, um, it's just a series of choices where you feel like you're doing the right thing at the time, but then as time goes by, you realize, oopsies. Um, and for me, it was to you know to jump in full-fledged and be an activist and help kind of change what I thought were the social woes locally and giving my all I don't I don't know anything but that it's either all in or all out um at the time it felt like there was no other choice so therefore there was no other choice um but definitely looking back on it I can use now that experience to realize that there's other other ways to ride a horse and I prefer to ride a horse with the saddle facing forward so yeah, it's, it's a little bit easier that. Yeah, day. it's it's a lot. It, it doesn't shape the legs so much if you put a saddle on for sure. But I think I mean, Lori and I were even talking a little mm-hmm. bit before the show. I think all of us hit a point in our lives though where we feel like, where am I going from here? Mm. I have to do something different. What was that point for you? Um. Yeah, you could Google it. For me, it's pretty easy. I'm John McClain, so you can Google John McClain Tucson homeless. Definitely, if you throw that in there, and you'll see that the city of Tucson did actually a month long sting on me, and they did everything they possibly could. One to discredit me, and two to try to bury me under the jail. Okay. Uh, um. So definitely, and whether you know I agreed with their position or not, 
um, just being in that position showed me that okay, you need to do try a different approach. Like I'm that as made much you as very I, vulnerable. Yeah, and as much as I love Jesus and the fact that he was a martyr that gave his his life for my sins, I'm not Jesus, right. and it's not my position to be a martyr for for any cause, really. Okay. Yeah. So that was your moment where you're like, I have to do something different. Yeah. So after the break, we'll talk about what you did do at Ifrit and why things are better now. How does that sound? You're really good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, really, you really I got to when he does that. I really do. <laughs> I do. Well, I am here, Kiki's Best Friends Radio Show, with my guest and usual co-host, mm. Pastor John McLean, sharing those very vulnerable moments. He called it his feminine side. I say it's your emotional side. Okay. Um, because right? it is manly to be emotional and to be vulnerable. Well, I'm okay with be, you know, showing my it. feminine side. I got feminine side, masculine side. I got many different sides. So yeah. I love it. And yeah. we're here with Lori of Sylvan Learning Center. We could not be here without our generous sponsors. Mm. So thank you to Lori for being here as our co-host today and sharing yeah. about Sylvan Learning Center. Mm. Thank you to Heidi's House of Wellness. That is Heidi Overman. And um, to... Sarasotan, uh, luxury real estate through Sarasotan, specializing in Oral Valley with the Oral Valley Homeowner Magazine. Mm. And we have Fork and Fires Trivia Night on mm -hmm. Sunday nights. We had a small turnout this week because of okay. the rain. Yeah. You know, Tucsonians don't leave weather. the house with the rain. Yeah, once it gets under 35, like we just kind of mm -hmm. hide under they, our Yep, band. but yep. next week, come on, we're supporting CORE. Mm. Um, that is Children of Restaurant Employees. So come join nice. us Sunday at Fork and Fire Absolutely. from 6 to 8 p.m. And if you are a networker, business owner, or want to meet others, join us at the Sands Club on Wednesday. We'll, we'll be back after these messages. Yep. Welcome back to Kiki's Best Friends Radio Show. This is Kiki Rogers. I'm here with one of my best friends and best co-host mm -hmm. and my best guest today, Pastor John McLean. That's nice. I like all those best. I can yeah. Go yeah, yeah, we, I like we can work this in every <laughs> angle, guys. <laughs> yeah. Let's market it. I love it. <laughs> merchandising, yeah, merchandising, best merchandising. Best, hat, best shirt, best pants, best hat. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here with our special guest and best co-host today, Lori from Sylvan Learning Center. Hi, thanks for having me. Welcome back, Lori. We're glad to have you. Yeah, and real quick again, tell um, our listeners about Sylvan, Sylvan Lear Learning Center. How do you spell the S-U-L-V-I-N? Uh, S-Y-L-V-A-N. Okay. okay, Sylvan Learning Sylvan. Center. Mm -hmm. S Sylvan. Sylvan. Sylvan, yes. Sylvan Learning Center yeah. and what you guys do. Because, I mean, I have a 16-year-old, 15-year-old, 14-year-old, and a 6-year-old and a newborn baby, so she'll probably be needing your services one day. <laughs> so to know that there's something like... Um, your service is available. Uh. One, it's great because I'll probably be needing them for my teenagers who, one of them is an all-A student, mm -hmm. but the other two need the right skills and techniques probably to catch up to him. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's what we do. We give the kids the tools they need to be successful in school. Mm -hmm. That's that's really where it's at. We um, we target the skills that they're, that they're missing mm -hmm. and help get them to, to be excellent students. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I asked Lori to be here today because the state of Arizona has um, put some money up for any student that is in public school. Yes, public or charter school. Or yes. charter mm. if it's publicly funded and mm. that they are in kindergarten through high school through yep. 12th grade. Yep. That they can access your tutoring yep. services for mm -hmm. free to the families it's it's a gift from the state and that and starts next week though so next tuesday yes we need you, them to get in touch with you yep as soon as possible so that we can set set things up um people can sign up all the way through till uh january 30th um and it's it's an amazing opportunity uh, to to get some tutoring that maybe they otherwise couldn't couldn't avail themselves to. And then, how can they can contact you to get a hold of you again? Um, they can look us up via Google. Okay. Um, uh, we have a website, or they can call us at five two zero three 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 five four four five. Perfect. Thank awesome. you, Lori. Yeah, thank you. That's and Lori and I are visiting with Pastor John. He's been sharing mm -hmm. about how he had chosen to be homeless so that he could. Um, be involved with the Occupy Tucson and reach out to the homeless directly. Mm -hmm. And that changed you. And you said you've realized after struggles with the city and with um, arrests that you had um, realized you needed to do something different in your life. Absolutely. I mean, and, and I think that also paired with 
um, I mean, that, that opened my eyes to the positive models around me that I needed to gravitate closer toward. Like for me, particularly, it was a mentor. My mentor was Pastor David Ferrari, who hosted a church um, that I that used to feed every Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And um, I just asked him, you know, if I could be more involved one day, eventually joined in their discipleship program, and then eventually helped them create a men's shelter at the church and do um, the first tiny house village ever in Tucson at that church. And that really, he taught me how to really be the pastor I was meant to be. Okay. And were you in a pastor capacity at that time? Were you in touch with your spirituality or with God? Well, I mean, I, I, I was raised in the church. I definitely was raised in the Baptist church. I wanted to be a pastor all the way up till I was 15, 16 years old and then kind of had other, found other plans in life. Um, but I saw kind of looking back on it that time that I was on the streets, even though I was, uh, I was homeless that entire time. Like I was setting up a homeless camp with resources and um, service providers and all that among that in the middle of downtown Tucson, you know, it, mm-hmm. it kind of, again, if people Google that, if you look back, you'll see, you know, throughout the early 2010s to 2015, there were all these homeless camps going on. And um, that was a lot of the work that I was doing because I was trying, I wasn't just out there under a tree reading a book. I was out there trying to trying to help people, trying to serve people in, in some capacity. So, so what really prompted you to take that path instead of just sitting under a tree and reading a book? Why why did you feel so compelled to to reach out and and try and help other people? I think it's kind of the same reason that I joined the military in the first place is why I even got into activism. Um, because when, when I joined the military, I wanted to serve people and I wanted to help and I wanted to serve my community, but I didn't really fill up that passion bucket how I wanted. So that's yeah. where I think activism really called to me. But unfortunately, when I got into activism, then I realized that also did not fill up my passion bucket right, the way right. I did. But then once the activism was gone, really all was left was me organizing homeless camps, um, partially out of necessity because there I was. <laughs> and then secondarily, or maybe primarily, um, I've always just wanted to serve, to serve. And at one time, and at one time, that was the language I'd use. I just always want to serve. But now I realize this whole time I'm just trying to find my best way to serve God. I'm okay. trying to find yeah. my purpose and calling yep. on this planet. Yeah. And it, so, did you feel like you were prepared for what God had in store for you when things started to change, or what did you have to do to prepare your heart for those changes? Um, definitely. I mean, God always has you ready. He has you more than ready for whatever the situation was. So certainly when catastrophe hit and, and, um, and I was, and I, and I needed to find mentor and I needed to kind of move in a direction. It was as clear as kind of reading this sign on the wall here in the studio, what I needed to do. It was just a matter of having the discipline to do it. Okay. And, um, that's so where did you find that discipline? I mean, you're on the street you're, you know, struggling. Where do you dig deep down for it, that discipline? You just eventually one reaches the place of of understanding. Okay. Like you understand that okay, I can I if I keep doing the same thing, I'm going to get the same result. So yes. So you reach you you really kind of step out of that insanity. And I think uh, funny enough, that's that probably is the where, definition of insanity, where the mental right? health epidemic that we speak yeah. about in in the United States, or particularly among the unhoused population, comes into place is we're kind of stuck in that insanity that we can keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. Did Did you ever come to a point where you just really wanted to just give it up and not try anymore? Or was this always an overriding need to to keep helping and to keep being an activist? Great question. Fun- I gotta have you back more. <laughs> Fun- funny enough, that the time that I wanted to give up and and not try anymore, um, not only in activism but in life, was the time when I started going in the pro- through the process of getting counseling, getting I got a Section Eight voucher and I was staying in an apartment. Um, but I was at, and I ha- even had a job at the VA, but I didn't have a car. 
all I had was like my food stamps. I had very lim- limited resources, you know, and I, I was starting to think to myself, is like, is this the best that life has for me? Like, if, if this is the best, maybe it'd be better off for my family if I just wasn't here. Mm-hmm. And um, that that was probably the hardest thing to learn how to get over. Thankfully, just through gaining a community, going to, back to church, um, getting get working, finding a partner, eventually getting married, like those things kind of helped me get out of that type of thinking. But um, yeah, when I was in the streets, it's it's super fun, and I think that's <laughs> why people, you know, a lot of people stay there because it is a lot more fun than going to work and all the other right. stuff that kind of goes along with responsibility. That. At first, I thought you were being sarcastic. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. you think it. Do you think some people stay unsheltered because it's easier? And, I think or, most I mean, people stay unsheltered because it's easier. Really? And I would I would just assume it's very difficult. I guess it's all about perspective, too. Um, yeah, and where you're standing on, on the side of the road. Like, definitely up until 2010, the only interaction I had with the unhoused population was what I saw in the cartoons and the guy with the little stick and the handkerchief yeah, on the... the, on the trains yeah Yeah. but um once i wasn't in it i saw that not only there there's over ten thousand homeless people in the city of tucson but there's an epidemic around it that they've criminalized homeless people and used them to feed our prison system and i was either going to do something about it from an institution standpoint or um it was going to go on and you did, and unfortunately, we are almost out of time. Mm. So, um, but he did do something different and started Veteran Rescue Mission. When did you begin that? Veteran Rescue Mission. We started in 2015 officially, and it's still going very it's strong. Been going. Tiny house village on the northwest part of town. We've helped over 400 veterans if, go from homeless to wow, housed. It's amazing. Mm. If you know somebody who is going through that, or if you're going through that yourself, um, how can one get in touch with? You, Pastor John, or the Veteran Rescue Mission, um, whether they need resources or if they want to help. VeteranRescueMission.org is definitely the best place to get information about what we do. Um, You can call me directly or the group 520-329-9192. But definitely go to VeteranRescueMission.org and just like... um, was was said earlier if you just google us we're pretty easy to find and and google sullivan what was it the name of the place sylvan, sylvan learning center Sy- sylvan learning <laughs> center because um they're they'll be just as helpful as, as we are depending on what your need is well we're so glad we got a chance to talk to you pastor john find yeah. out more about your story and what motivated you and got this whole thing started why we're here today mm-hmm. is to support that veteran rescue I know we didn't even get to the common good media group part just because there's so much well, there is time. well another you time. know if we get more sponsors we can maybe expand our time but yeah. um if you're interested in that you can reach me kiki rogers at 520-848-5003 we're um very grateful to have sylvan learning center here mm-hmm. Lori. Okay. if you have a child um who is still in public school but needs some tutoring or want to take advantage of that free tur- tutoring mm. the um i'm going yeah, and mm-hmm. the definitely they're testing to find out where your child's strengths and weaknesses are for it to be specialized. Contact Sylvan Learning Center, and what's their contact information, Lori? So we're at sylvanlearning.com or 520 Thank you again for being here. Oh, thank, thank you for having me. <laughs> we were really happy to. Yeah. And thank you to our other sponsors that we have. Um, we have Sarah Soders, who is our your go-to real estate lady in Oro Valley and mm-hmm. Marana mm-hmm. And, and, and Tucson, throughout the Tucson area. But she has the Oro Valley Homeowners Magazine and Heidi's House of Wellness, Heidi Overman. And come join us at Fork and Fire Sunday nights for trivia Trivia from 6 to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. And the the fifth Wednesday of this month, July 31st, we'll be having Kiki's Best Friends Radio Show Launch Party. We are. We're going to celebrate at the Sam's Club at 9 a.m. on the 31st for all you networkers and business owners or anyone who just wants to come join the fun. Thank you for listening, everyone. This is Kiki's Best Friends Radio. Be your best because no one else can do it better than you. I would.